This video shows a really great painting exercise to help you think beyond brushes. First, I made a string grid by tying a knot at the end of some string and stapling the string in place on the sides of my frame. I chose to do a string grid instead of drawing one on with charcoal because I knew the charcoal would have created problems in my sky area, which I planned to spray on. Then I drew out the landscape from my reference photo with charcoal. This is called cartooning. When you cartoon, you want to be careful that you are very light-handed and gentle. Pushing too hard will make it harder to fix drawing mistakes and can muddy your paint. Plus, it is just a waste of charcoal. Then I removed the string grid and prepared my paints. This project was done entirely with Roscoe Off-Broadway paints, which I got from their scenic sets. I also made a small muslin flat so that I could test both my colors and a few techniques on the actual material. Then I gathered any tool I could think of that wasn't a paintbrush. It is often best to work from the background to the foreground, so I started with a preval sprayer for the sky. Prevals are very finicky, as you can see with me struggling to get it to spray, but with some patience and messing around, you can get them working. Once you understand their quirks, they are a very useful tool. Moving one step forward, I sponged on the background hills, giving it some indistinct texture and blending the top edge into the sky a little. Then I laid down some base colors for the grass using a rag. I could have added water into the paint to help it spread better, but I wanted to preserve some color at full thickness and I don't have enough cups to do that, so I dipped the rag in a cup of water when the paint wasn't spreading as well as I would have liked. This step definitely was tedious, and it was tempting to use a brush, but rubbing with a rag created some nice grassy textures for the base that would not have been as good with a brush. It forced me to think in a different way. Next, I basted in most of the leaves with a natural sponge. Painting on a larger scale, a textured sponge roller would have been better, but at this size, doing it by hand was fine. Then I basted in the tree trunks with the edge of a mini paint pad. The tree trunks were when I most wished I was using a brush, but the paint pad created some unique textures I wouldn't have gotten with a brush. Next, I made a tray of watered-down paint for Schlepichka, a technique of applying paint with a feather duster. I have no idea if I'm saying that word right or where it comes from, but it is a real term for flogging with paint. For a larger scale painting, I would have attached the feather duster to a bamboo stick or something so I could do it standing, but again, for a small scale thing like this, by hand was fine. Shlapishka is pretty fun. You just whack and twirl the paint until it looks right. For this, I did passes with brown and dark green, and then progressed to lighter tones with mid-tone green, light green, yellow, and pale yellow. The only time I cleaned the duster was between yellow and pale yellow. Then I used a mini texture roller to start adding to the leaves. Wow. 
The small size of this painting made it difficult to use a roller, even a mini one, so it didn't last long before I reverted to a sponge again where I had a little more control. Also using a small sponge, I added some Van Dyke Brown to the trees to darken some areas. Ideally, I would have done this before doing the leaves, but I didn't notice it needed it until this point, naturally. I sprayed on more sky color with the preval to make the edges of the tree trunks more fuzzy and indistinct, and then sprayed a golden orange wash along the grass and tree edges. I also added some orange with a sponge here and there on the trunks. After some finishing touches to the leaves, I spattered the grass with dark brown and light yellow for some flowers and weeds. Plus, everything in theater needs a little spatter. And with a final spray of some more orange, it was done. I highly recommend doing an exercise like this to anyone who hasn't done it before. The point of this exercise is to show how different tools can help you create specific marks and textures more quickly than you could with a brush. It will force you to think and problem solve creatively, and you will be surprised by the tools you find most helpful. Scenic artists often have to paint very quickly, so a creative use of our tools will save us time and headaches.